when I'd finished this whole body of work for the Nine Inch Nails album, Hesitation Marks, Trent Reznor got in touch with me to ask me to do a book, some kind of limited edition book that focused entirely on the artwork. And I started planning that with a project manager in America as to what this might be. We came up with this idea for a five color printed hardback book. And then one of the ideas we came up with was, um, or the project manager came up with, which I thought was ludicrous at the time, was wouldn't it be great if there was an original piece of work in each of these limited editions, 2,000 pieces? And I thought it was a great idea in that sense, but practically I thought, how do I do this? You know, I, my studio isn't very big. Um, I don't know how I can physically do this, you know. Anyhow, they said, don't worry about that. We'll hire you a warehouse in Los Angeles. We'll get all the materials you need. You just tell us what you need. You come over and do it. So that was arranged and I came over with Mike, who's my musical collaborator usually. He came over as my kind of painting assistant and driver. <laughs> he came out and we spent three weeks solidly painting these huge canvases, which were then cut down into 2,000 pieces, about six inches by four each, which is then going to be framed in this quarter inch steel, quarter inch quarter inch steel, which you just spray it with a demister and it, it, it rusts and seals itself. Each one of those is going to be different. In every, in every one of these limited editions, every piece of artwork is going to be different. Every piece, every frame is going to be different. Hesitation marks came out of lots of conversations with Trent and emails winging, winging backwards and forwards about what this could mean. I mean, Trent came to me first saying, I'm, I'm, the tracks I'm making are kind of referencing that period when he was making the downward spiral. He'd been talking about how it had taken him a long time to get over that period and to understand it and understand what he'd been going through and to lose the bitterness and the aggression and the confusion of all that and to, to impose some kind of order on his life again and harness all the energy that came out of that period into what he was working on now, which was this new album. While we were talking, I was saying, well, uh, on one of our conversations, I said, I'm really interested in kind of forensics and a kind of anthropology of forensics, of using this as an analogy of coming into, a, like, for instance, a crime scene after the event. And there are just traces of evidence of something that may have happened in there. And from those traces, one has to somehow speculate or try and find the answers as to what has actually happened. I was kind of interested in this, using minimal guides to try and suggest something. And I mentioned this phrase, hesitation marks which is um, a term used in forensics and police. When uh, a suicide or apparent suicide is found, if the, the victim has several uh, hesitant marks, cut marks on their wrist, they're called hesitation marks. And they're generally followed by the incisive final cut. And I just mentioned this in passing as one thing I was looking at in terms of this body of work and Trent his ears obviously pricked up on the end of the phone and said, what, wait, wait, wait a minute, what's that about, you know? So I explained again what hesitation marks were and that finally became the, the album title. That kind of gave me an, an in into what I wanted to do, this kind of forensic anthropology with this, the rest of this body of work. And if you, if you look at the work, a lot of them are about, they have minimal things in and they are like little fragments, traces of something that's happened in this space. The works generally emerge out of a kind of symbiosis between a lot of research, a lot of reading, a lot of note-taking, a lot of cross-referencing, and the processes themselves. And they both kind of uh, dictate to one another. They sort of work together. So the processes, the chemicals I use, the materials I use, the sort of chance elements, that, the stuff that happens with the work, then takes me back to the ideas, the main ideas that I'm trying to work with and maybe reshapes them slightly. Uh, and similarly, I might come across other ideas, sort of tangential ideas, that then reshape what I'm doing physically. So it, it, take, it takes a while, this kind of exchange goes on for a long, long time, before something new starts emerging, something very coherently new starts emerging. It's a difficult process to really define and tabulate, if you like. It's, doesn't work like that. 
The piece, Cargo in the Blood, which features these photographs of me that my father had taken, was chosen as one of the album covers by the band. I had no, it wasn't up to me what they chose. I gave them all this artwork and said, use it as you will. You know? And it just so happened they chose that one, which was really important to me. I don't know if they realised how significant that piece is to me, but, so I'm quite pleased that they did choose it. And it, as a title, Cargo in the Blood, it, it became a bit of a fixation with me. This title seemed to sum up everything I've been working on for the last five, ten years. This, this whole idea of something that can be carried in the blood, and it could be good or bad. Something that could be character building, something that could be destructive, something that could be positive. Um, I've, I've, I found the title to be a kind of a useful and strong, a strong title. It's kind of got a graphic strength to it, and yet it's elusive as well. I'd moved up to the Lake District. I'd been there two years. Um, I had a young son who was two, and I was doing a series of work, a one-year project for the Royal Shakespeare Company, and I was having a cup of coffee outside, a beautiful spring day, watching my local farmer with his sheepdog herding the sheep and the phone rang and it was my first experience of a conference call and there were three voices on the end of this line in three different cities in America. One of them was Trent Reznor, one of them was his then manager and one of them was his then designer and they introduced themselves and I'd heard their stuff before, I liked it and they said their thinking of bringing another album out and would I be interested in doing imagery for it. And we talked for about half an hour on the phone while I was watching these sheep and thinking this is very weird. <laughs> and um, at the end of the conversation, I kind of got it. I knew what I needed to do and I just started work straight away. Again, I, a bit like this project, the hesitation marks for Nine Inch Nails, I became so immersed in the work, I ended up producing about 30 pieces of work and they probably were only looking for one, you know. And I had them all photographed and sent the photographs over to um, Los Angeles, and they liked them a lot, and they started producing all these different versions of covers and singles and things from all this artwork, and it went multi-platinum, and <laughs> it did really well. A lot of the works in the, the set hesitation marks, they, they use a lot of they're found objects or found and treated objects. Sometimes bones that I find, sometimes x-rays. And they're not used for any kind of morbid or macabre reasons at all. They're, they're quite the reverse. Bones, teeth, hair, they live after our bodies have physically died. They carry on growing, you know, and they also carry the DNA of our characteristics, of our makeup. So they're re regenerative, they're, and they've been used in other societies as symbols of regeneration. So they're used for various levels of meaning, they're metaphors. There are narratives in the work, but they've, they've, um, they're there because they've come out of my research into the ideas that I want to pursue and explore. And they've allowed me to get to the end point, you know, the, the finished work. Um, wouldn't have, the, the work wouldn't be as it is if I hadn't gone through the, all these various tangential and twisted narratives. My work uses a lot of um, chance, indeterminacy, and a lot of it is about contingency. It's about, um, you know, a reaction born out of an action, or an action born out of a reaction. And again, that references the natural world, the perpetual flux that's already in the natural world. So I'm kind of using that as an analogy and a, a model, if you like, for the processes I work with in a material way, but also in a conceptual way. So by working with processes that, that mirror the natural world's processes, I'm hoping to do something new that also references this legacy, if you like. <laughs>